Hello everybody and in this video we're going to continue talking about chemical bonding. We've already learned about two types of chemical bonding, now we're going to learn about the third. We'll discuss covalent bonding and the types of bonds that can be found in a covalent compound. Let's quickly review what we've already seen in terms of bonding. We've already discussed ionic bonding which is the transfer of electrons between a metal and a nonmetal. Here is metallic bonding, which is the attraction of um, metal ions that creates the sea of electrons. And what we're going to focus on in this video is covalent bonding. And in covalent bonding, we're going to see a sharing of electrons between two nonmetal elements, and this will allow for something called polar or nonpolar covalent compounds to form. It's important that we keep in mind that all bonding occurs so that every atom will have eight electrons in its outer valence shell. Covalent bonding is the sharing of electrons between nonmetal elements. These elements are found on the right side of the periodic table plus hydrogen. And the example here shows water, H2O. And you'll notice as the two hydrogens move in towards the oxygen to react, they're going to end up having a sharing of electrons between the hydrogens and oxygens. This creates what is called a molecule. And a molecule is a neutral group of atoms that are held together by covalent bonds. Carbon dioxide, which is CO2, water, they are all considered molecules. A molecular formula will show the types and numbers of atoms in a covalently bonded compound. Here with C6H12O6, we can see that we have six carbon atoms, 12 hydrogen atoms, and we'll have six oxygen atoms that will bond to form that compound. A polyatomic is a charged group of covalently bonded atoms. We will discuss these in a little bit more detail later, but you'll notice that carbon is a nonmetal, oxygen is a nonmetal, so they are covalently bonded, but the overall group will have this charge of a minus 2 on it. Diatomics are atoms that cannot exist alone and must be paired. There are seven diatomics, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, and the halogens, which is fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. You will not see hydrogen written as just an H. It will be written as H2. And that goes for the other six. I'll show you a neat way of remembering this in class. Something unique with covalent bonds is that they can create different types of bonds. There are three different bonds that can occur with covalent bonding. A single bond, a double bond, and a triple bond. And just like their names, well, you could pretty much figure out what's happening between the elements. In a single bond, there's one pair of electrons shared. Double bond, there's two pairs. and a triple bond, there's three pairs. With the sharing of electrons, it's going to affect the strength and the length of these particular bonds. So hydrogen had one bond between it oxygen had two, and nitrogen had three from the previous slide. If you think about it, hydrogen has only two electrons shared between the two. Nitrogen has six. When you look at this, it's going to be easier to break apart the hydrogen instead of breaking apart the nitrogen. So it makes the triple bond stronger. So this is stronger. It's really the strongest out of the three. That strongest bond also is the shortest. Because there are six electrons here that are shared, they're pulling the nitrogens closer together. So this is the shortest. So it's important for you to be able to remember that. That ends the first video on covalent bonds. Our next video will talk about 
drawing the Lewis structure for covalent compounds. So please make sure that you write down the sample problems and follow along as we go through those notes.